Hey y'all, so this is the, the real real look at my food forest garden. So I'm not gonna clean it up, I'm not gonna do anything, I'm just gonna show you what it is as it is. So over here, before we get in there, this is what used to be the shade garden. Um, it's quite a bit behind the elephant ear, uh, the black magic elephant ear. We've got roses and I can't remember what those other pink and purple flowers are. Impatience? No. Yeah, maybe impatience. I don't know. Anyway, lots of stuff back there. And then we come around to the semi mode part. And then right here we have the jelly palm, but the jelly palm has been chewed by the dog, so we had to put the fence around it. And then I have a little um, first year hibiscus, cold hardy hibiscus growing here. Um, the flowers are really pretty in the morning, but then they fade as the day goes on. So that's those a little white zinnia in there. And we come around to the entrance of the food forest. So down here I have um, basil, it's tree basil. This basil is supposed to be perennial, we'll see. The zinnias are enormous and I cannot believe how well they performed this whole hot, hot, hot season. They just are gorgeous, pink and red in there. This is anise hyssop, this flower thing. Some of them are, you know, at the end, but the bees are still loving them. Some of them have still got a little bit of purple there too. The archway has had quite a bit of growth. Um, there's some remnants of some sunflowers there. We've got some remnants of some squashes down the grow another basil down here. You can see the little red in there is still the remnants of the salvia that is still blooming. It has bloomed the entire season. Been a wonderful bee feed. Bee feed. Um, coming under the archway, we've got we've got some rogue tomatoes still growing over here. We've got some grapevine coming all the way around. Um, we actually have down here, I actually have one to pick. I had my first one yesterday, uh, but there is my uh, purple muscadine grape. These are done too. I got three, yay! So there's my purple muscadine grape, some salvia down here at the bottom, the remnants of the holy basil down here as well, and you can see it's in rough shape. This was actually a volunteer thing, but it smells like dill. So I'm wondering if it's like a daria or a wild dill. Um, or it might, I planted daria last year, so it could be, could be some seeds that got spread from that. Some remnants of an old sunflower here. Um, we got grapevines hanging out all the way over there. So this maroon thing here, which there are a bunch of, is actually my cranberry hibiscus. And you'll notice I've got several of these in here. This thing might be 15, 20 feet tall, um, and they're all enormous. You can see there's one, there's one. So I've got this just absolutely gorgeous wildness going on. This is the remnants of the corn patch, which the rats came and ate all the corn. Uh, this beautiful greenery right here is um, that hibiscus that you make hibiscus tea with. You can make the tea with the cranberry hibiscus too, but this is actually the roselle hibiscus what's in there and you can see a very disheveled okra plant that is needs to harvest seeds on that one um, more cranberry hibiscus back there but as we come around back to this section here this is the the lemon um, fig there we've got some more cranberry hibiscus this is the loquat the loquat was the biggest thing in here for the longest time and then the cranberry hibiscus took over more salvia more remnants of squashes zinnias I mean, oh, and this this one right here is a Mexican sunflower, and they are the most incredibly cold, or I'm sorry, hot tolerant um, flower that I have found ever, except for the salvia. Salvia's doing a pretty good job with it too. And then we've come to the next trellis. Now I planted a yard long southern bean type here, and you can see them all just hanging off the trellis. So this trellis got, has a lot of things. It's got tomatoes, it had cucumbers, but they're long gone. It's got some grapes, it's got these yard-long beans, and then over here we've also got the um, tea hibiscus, the roselle hibiscus back there as well. Down here is just a little yearling um, uh, the cherry, Surinam cherry, I think that's a Surinam cherry. And then over here behind the hibiscus, you can't see, right here is a mulberry, a, a, a ever-bearing mulberry. And as we come through, beautiful trellis with the hanging fruit which is, is so cool um we uh come to more 
um, salvia. Um, a bunch more basils back here. I got lemon balm. I got a tarragon. Um, zinnias. A bunch of weeds. Uh, that there is a blueberry. The other side here is the lemon, which has feet of growth this year after our very bad freeze that killed everything off. Another cranberry hibiscus. We're coming back here. This whole section was just absolutely full of squash. The squashes have pretty much all pooped out except for two varieties, the seminal pumpkin and the um, Tetsukabuto, which is the apocalypse squash. Both of those will reinvigorate themselves in the from wherever they bind and as the fall coolness starts a little bit, but some more cranberry hibiscus. I just, I absolutely love this cranberry hibiscus. Got some more flowers back here. And this is kind of where we wrap around. Again, this was completely, all this bare ground was completely full. And I need to get in here and mow. I've been putting some of my scraps from my garden job back here. So I just throw the remnants of whatever the organic material is. So that'll be soil next year. And then over here we have the grapefruit and uh, there's the other side of the blueberry grapefruit. This right here is um, chia seed. It, it, none of my chia seeds have um, bloomed yet to get the actual like chia seed part. But the ones I have in the other garden are 15 feet tall. They're just amazing. Here's my volunteer elderberry, I think. Not really 100% sure if it's elderberry yet. <laughs> it hasn't flowered, so I'm hoping I get the second round of flowering down here in Mississippi. This is the best citrus that we have uh, by far so far. Um, this is the one that I planted under the oak tree. So that's a water oak. This is under the oak tree. And this was recommended by some Florida gardeners that this is the best place to plant your citrus because there's something about the combination of those two that the citrus really likes. So remnants of the sage, another crazy cranberry hibiscus. Coming back to the back side of the trellis here, we can see more of the herbs. We can see the Roselle hibiscus. This right here is a chaya, which is also called Mexican tree spinach. This is poisonous when eaten raw, but if you cook it for 20 minutes or so, it's a superfood and is, they call it Mexican tree spinach. I'm sure it tastes like spinach. I have not eaten it yet. This is my best looking plant. So I want to let this one grow a little bit and then make babies off of this one. This will die back. It may come back in the spring, depending on how harsh our winter is, but I want to make sure to get viable uh, babies off of this plant to be able to keep in pots over the winter. So that's the best one I've got. Another one over here that's not doing too bad. And then over here we have more of the Mexican sunflower. I just got to show you, these guys are just gorgeous and they follow the sun. So, and that just so pretty. And then over here, this is probably my biggest cranberry hibiscus plant. I mean, this thing is just, it's leaning on the fence row. It's just huge. Um, and then I actually can't even get down the next path because it's so overgrown and overflown with stuff. I need to come in here and do some chop and drop, but this is my um, other path that needs to be mowed. But you can see my cranberry hibiscus, it looks like I had a break there. Cranberry hibiscus is doing well. And right here is where I got my only two watermelon that I grew that did great. More um, zinnias doing good. Oh, cranberry hibiscus. That is definitely a winner. I'm hoping to be able to get seeds off of her when she starts to flower. Okay, I'm like, I can't walk here because this is my path and my ochre has fallen over into the path. So I'm gonna have to clean that up too. Um, this is the back end of another section of the garden. I've got sweet potatoes in there. I had tomatoes on the on the trellis there now it's kind of been taken over by the um this is a, a kind of spinach of malabar spinach there's a few tomatoes still hanging out in there but not many and then i did a cover crop of soybean in here uh because we were dealing with the soybean shortage right now and i thought maybe that could supplement the chicken feed and it may i do have some little beans on there another cranberry hibiscus i'm gonna try to without killing myself get through here this is a, another trellis that I built. It's actually a bamboo trellis. Um, and I built this sometime after the last video, or maybe right before the last video. And it also has the yard long beans hanging down. Not as many as the other one. I didn't grow as perfectly, but they, it's still cool. Um, and those you can eat, if you eat them really young, you can eat it as a, as a 
as a you know summer bean but they also um they dry and you can eat just the, pe the bean part out of them to harvest the bean part and you can see actually let me come back here you can see that they've got decent sized beans in them you can see kind of where the bean is and they just go on and on and on i think the longest one i've gotten has been about a, I don't know, a foot and a half maybe there's some remnants of some very cool Anyway, lots of Mexican sunflowers here. The idea for these guys was to shade the squash, but the squash is pretty much all pooped out underneath here. And the Mexican sunflowers are doing great. <clears throat> and then over here, I've got my um, Pakistani mulberry. And this is the mulberry that will grow like three or four inch mulberries. And this has probably grown five, four, three or four feet maybe. This, this, that, I mean, it was, you know, eight inches tall when I got it. And now it's just it's almost as tall as I am. Back end of the little garden over here is some squash that I planted. Um, there was some tomatoes in here, but they're long done. Little squash remnants still back here. More Mexican sunflowers. Regular beautiful uh, strawberry lemonade flowers. Those are gorgeous. And then um, over here, eventually this is going to be my tropical garden. So this is moringa. A little moringa patch is doing great. Moringa trees are over, one of them there is over the fence, and so they're doing really well. Down on the floor, I've got mostly sweet potato, but there's a couple flowers in there too. There's another one, another very small plant down here called Katuk, and it's actually not doing too bad. It really needs a little bit of shade, so I planted it pretty close and under the Moringa. But I'd like to actually put like a hoop house or something back here, a big one, a tall one, and um, actually have papaya in here and maybe star fruit and a couple of them, um, mango maybe. Um, I get a couple of real tropical stuff. They, I can do that here if I have winter cover for them. So winter cover, it gives you, every layer of cover gives you an extra zone. So that would be a solid 10A and that you can grow all this stuff in. So that would be cool. So that's my plan back here. As you can see right now, it is overgrown and a mess. So mowing is on my to-do list. That beauty. Isn't she gorgeous? Can't get her to focus. There she is. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. It is a lot of overgrown. Uh, you, as I mentioned, I like a wild garden, so I certainly have it this year. So that's the food forest. <laughs>